So I am super excited today because there are more orange sticker sightings throughout Hobby Lobby. And you probably already know there is a huge sale going on. And I don't know, there's nothing in particular that I was looking for, but you know, when it's a sale, you don't really need anything, but you want everything. So I know I've been going there quite often and that's because they keep moving their aisles, like their discount aisles, markdown aisles. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like following all of those sales. So. If you're like me, you'll probably end up seeing a lot of Tim, as in Tim Holtz in the paper crafting aisle. So I, I really wanted to pick up this ephemera set. I just felt like it was just too funny not to. You can just like write your own little drama with it. <laughs> So if you want to write your own little drama, pick up this set here. It comes with 76 different pieces. For size reference, if you have these little photo boxes, as you can see right here, one of the ephemera pieces is pretty much large enough to fit that box. And they're all different sizes and all different types of styles and genres. So you have things like a playing card, electric fan, a lot of beautiful florals and flowers. There's also some animals in here as well, a lot of birds. Basically, you're getting 76 different pieces. There's also kind of like a nautical theme where you have your seahorse and some shells. A lot of things for art as well. You have like your paint brushes and your bottles and your scissors, and it's just a whole lot of items. And I will say that the Hobby Lobby that I went to, I really wasn't gonna go to this one, but I don't know. I just learned this term, which is called FOMO, fear of missing out, F-O-M-O, -O, I guess. I don't even know if I'm using it correctly, but I was, like worried that I wasn't gonna be able to get to the markdowns at my local store and they haven't even started at my local store. And that's kind of why I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can keep chasing the sale down like consistently. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, well, let me check out this other store. And I was asking around to see how long ago they had made their markdowns. And like, I asked a lot of different people. It was anywhere from like a week and a half to two weeks. And I was just thinking, well, I'm probably not gonna find much at this store. But I was pleasantly surprised to find a lot of really great goodies. I will say that I think the store was more planner based because a lot of the planner items really sold out. But for paper crafting, there was lots of really great goodies still left over. These were a few of my favorites from the collection. So right here, you're seeing some of the distress. And there was only four, actually there was five. I left one at the store because it kind of like spilled all over the packaging and plastic. And I was like, I don't really know how much ink is left over. So I left that one at the store. But I'm still really happy that I was able to find these four. And then I also found some alcohol pearls. So this set contains Sublime, Tranquil, and Intrigue. If you are starting or already have an alcohol ink collection, you might want to invest in one of these. This is the organization tin for it. It's really nice because it actually is made specifically for the 0.5 fluid ounce bottles. And so those aren't gonna shift around inside this container. So I can definitely grow the collection. There's a lot of empty spaces. So 30 bottles is quite a lot. Next up we have these here, which are little tongs, but they are made specifically, like if you're using your heat embossing tool, it's meant to be a little bit gentle so that you don't have any like indentations when you're dealing with your paper and your embossing. So it's not something that is used to actually pick up things. So as you can look at the paper clip, it's not pressing down and that's because it's not really by force. You're just trying to hold on to, lightly hold on to that paper, I guess. So I thought that was really cute. So I picked it up and there's like a lot more other things that aren't like actual Tim Holtz or Ranger, but you know, I felt like it could fit in the collection. So I added those on as well. I really should have picked up two sets of these keys. These are actually like metal. I thought they were plastic. So I was like, okay, I just kind of grabbed them, threw them in the cart, but no, these are really nice. You can use them for jewelry. And I did create something on my last video. So if you love jewelry, I'll leave that video also linked to the end of my video. So you can just click on it. But this is something that I made on my last video, but I definitely could have used this. I really love these teeny tiny keys. They are tiny and they're super cute and they would make like the perfect pair of earrings. And then also speaking of like jewelry and earrings, kind of going back to this Tim Holtz inspired kind of like vintage style. I really love this project. It was super fun to make and a really great use out of all the 
jewelry pieces that I tend to pick up from Hobby Lobby. So yeah, super inspired by today's segment and it was really fun to create this. And there's a lot of different layers on there and actually the middle layer was supposed to be a bracelet but I loved it so much to kind of like layer up the necklace and make it a little bit more chunkier that I just turned it into part of the necklace and then I created a whole separate bracelet. So. A lot of you probably already know this, but I like to say it over and over again because I don't like taking 100% credit for it because, you know, a big portion of putting the jewelry pieces together are my parents, so I love to design them. My mom loves to design as well, and my dad's a huge part of it as well because all the designs that me and my mom come up with, my dad actually puts together. He does all of the pliers, the wire work, the beadings, all of that. I guess it's kind of like a Tim Holtz, right? Like a male crafter. <laughs> And you guys know the story, like in a way he was somewhat involuntarily volunteered for it. I saw him working on his guitar one day and you know, when you switch out the strings and stuff, he was really great with like the plier work that I was like, I saw the talent and I said, you know what? You would be a great fit for the jewelry department. <laughs> So I remember I had bought this from Hobby Lobby once upon a time and I definitely wanted to kind of build upon that. There are some really great paper pads that are like fall theme. I'm just gonna give you like a quick look on this one. I found a lot of really great paper at the store, but it was a lot of the seasonal type of paper. So a lot of the other type of paper had sold out already. I just really love to craft and I come up with a lot of really quirky ideas when I craft because I always try to get as much use out of each product as I possibly can, which you'll see in the next video. So I picked up pretty much every single paper puncher that was on sale at that store. So that is in the works and you guys are gonna be able to see like the things that you can make with it. Like a circle is not really just a circle. It never really is on my channel, right? There's always something that you can do to turn it into something else. So using the circle punch along with the ornate bracket punch, I definitely want to make snow globes. So when I was in the store, I was like, I definitely have to pick these two up. I know it seems kind of expensive, like at $9.49 a piece, but you're looking at like a circle punch that's three and a half inches and then the ornate bracket punch that's three inches. So so that kind of like, if I need to kind of make a lot of items in a rush, I don't have to pull out my machines or anything like that. I could just use this little paper punch and I don't know, the convenience and ease of use is definitely worth the extra because you can make as many circles as you need to, as many ornate brackets as you need to. So definitely worth it in the long run. So I'm gonna do a snow globe with it, but think about that you have your alcohol inks, your distress inks. So the distress inks is really gonna make it look like it has a lot of dimension to it. For the circle punch, you can turn those into planets, um, the moon, and then you can also with trick or treat around the corner if you want to do a little crystal ball with all of your cute little treats and candies. Um, yeah, so a lot that you can do with this and I don't know, I really need to charge my camera. So yeah, that's why I think the picture is kind of off a bit. But stay tuned for that video and if you are interested in seeing the projects along with the items that I picked up, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell. That's going to notify you of all of my new videos. And then I do also want to talk about the wax seals. So a lot of you already know how I feel about these and that is I love them. They are so easy to use and I do have a video on that. So if you're looking specifically for a video for this particular brand and this particular style, I'll leave that video at the end of this video so you can just click on it. So if you're a crafter that needs a little laughter and you guys are feeling the vibe, please don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell. That's going to notify you of all of my new videos. I thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a very very wonderful day.